gauss law and its applications before going to the statement of gauss law let us try to understand the concept of flux the concept of flux when a bulb emits light rays the part of the rays which causes sensation of vision is called luminous flux luminous flux similarly we can imagine the charge emits electric flux is only an imaginary concept the electric field of a charge can be visualized in terms of electric flux lines of electric force the electric field of a given region can be graphically represented by drawing lines of electric force we know that the electric field e is equal to the force experienced by the unit positive charge if a unit positive charge is allowed to move freely it moves in the direction of resultant electric field let us say if i place the unit positive charge here it moves radially outwards similarly it here it moves radially outwards okay now the lines of force are drawn in such a way that the tangent to the line of force gives the direction of electric field these lines of force are purely a geometrical construction which helps us to visualize the nature of the field they have no physical existence the lines of electric force are referred as electric flux the density of lines of force or flux represent the strength of the electric field the electric flux d5 passing through unit normal area ds is equal to the strength of the electric field here e is equal to d5 by ds here the area vector is always perpendicular to the area ab cd if area vector makes an angle theta with electric field then d5 is equal to the dot product of electric field vector and area vector that is d5 is equal to e ds cos theta from the nature of electric lines of force we can predict the nature of electric field in the first case the field is uniform field in the second case the field is the direction of field is same but magnitude is different at different places in the third case the magnitude is same but direction is different the direction is given by tangent to the line of force in fourth case both the direction magnitude of field are different let us calculate the total electric flux emitted by a charge q a point charge q imagine a gaussian surface which is a sphere of radius r this is the gaussian surface just sphere of radius r if ds is the small element of the spherical surface this ds the total electric flux pi is equal to integral of e dot ds here the electric where e is the electric field on the surface then electric we know that electric field e is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q by r square the total surface area of the sphere is 4 pi r square and the angle between e and ds is zero so cos zero is one then the total flux coming from a point charge is equal to 1 by epsilon not times the charge now we will give the statement of the gauss law that is the total electric flux the total electric flux passing through a closed surface is equal to 1 by epsilon not times the total charge enclosed by that surface that is integral of e dot ds is equal to 1 by epsilon not times the charge enclosed by the total charge enclosed by that surface gauss law gauss law is taken as fundamental law of nature a law whose validity is shown by experiments it is possible to derive gauss law from coulomb's law gauss law is based on the inverse square dependence on distance contained in coulomb's law any violation of gauss law will indicate the departure from the inverse square law gauss law is true for any closed surface this closed surface usually referred as gaussian surface no matter what is its shape or size in the next video we'll discuss the applications of gauss law